So, today, we're going to be playing some visual novel games, like Dragon Bomba and Phoenix Detroit. Uh, I'm going to be doing visual novel novel. Basically, I'm just going to be playing visual novels anytime I go live on stream for the entirety of November. So, whenever I go live, I'm probably going to be doing either Dragon Bomba or Phoenix Wright is returning. If I finish Phoenix Wright is returning, I'll go to the second one because I don't know I played on the VR as soon as came out. I've never played the uh, the uh, the trilogy, the one that got remastered and it has like up graphics and everything. So that's basically what we're doing. So let's get started. Let me turn off the music because the Phoenix Wright music is excellent. Playing on on PC but with a controller. So the first turnabout. So let me see what has been my experience with these games. I beat Phoenix Wright one two three. I beat Apollo Justice, and then I left off at uh, AC Attorney Investigations. I got to like the second case of that game and then I dropped it. Uh, I dropped it because I don't know. I think I just lost interest, but it was really fun. If I can catch up to there, that would be amazing because I can continue for uh, playing the one on the 3DS, which is like Spirit something. And the two, oh yeah, the second uh, AC Attorney Investigations got translated, so we can also do that on stream. They would just won't look as good because they haven't been remastered yet. So let's do that. Do I still sound lower than the music? There you go. Let me just bring it down a bit. Bring myself up just a bit. Oh, damn it. Oh, damn it. Uh. Okay. Damn it. Why me? I can't get caught. Not like this. Oh, I remember. It's this guy. Saw it. I've got to find somebody to pin this on. Someone like that guy. Him. I'll make a look like he did it. I guess third. Okay, defend the lobby number two. Boy, am I nervous. Right. Uh, I don't know what voice to give Mia. Ah, oh, goddammit. Um, right. I'll give her the... The typical dumb girl voice. Oh, hi, Chief. Well, I'm glad I met it on time. No, I don't know what to say. Oh, I got that making me embarrassed. Hmm. I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everybody takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. This is a lot about you and your client as well. Uh, thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean you knew to defend him before the case? Yeah. Actually, I kind of owe him my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over. My life. It's all over. Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, that's him. Death. Despair. Oh. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna die. It sounds like he wants to die. Um, yeah. God damn. Fucking Larry. <laughs> Nick. Hey there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty. Tell me, th tell them I'm guilty. Give me the death sentence. I ain't afraid to die. W what? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over. 
I'm finished. I'm finished. I can't live in a world without her. I can't. Who who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Oh, Nick, you gotta tell me. Who took my baby away? Um, the person responsible for the girl's staff? The newspaper says it was you. I'm getting nervous. <laughs> my name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. It's getting hot. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts. My best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying. When something smells, it's usually the butts. I still fucking... I hate that fucking... Uh. In 23 years I've known him, it's usually been through. He's had a knack for getting himself into trouble. Yeah. I kind of, I have kind of like a hate relationship, hate like relationship with Larry because he's fucking annoying, but he knows he's annoying. So. Yeah. One thing I can say though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. And that I owe him one. Which is why I took the taste to clear his name. I'm stuttering. I'm stuttering like a motherfucker. <laughs> okay. And that's just what I'm... And that's just what I'm gonna do. August 3rd, 10 a.m. District Court record... Uh, court number whatever. <laughs> Don't care. The court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. The prosecution's ready, your honor. The um, defense is ready, your honor. <clears throat> Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Y yes, your honor. I'm a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will be decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. T thanks. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, give the circumstances. I think we should have... <clears throat> I think we should at least test the ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. Gulp. Hands shaking. Eyesight fading. <laughs> The test will consist of a simple few, uh, simple, a few simple questions. Answer them, and clearly and concisely. Ah, oh, god damn it! Uh, please state the defendant's name. In this case, it was Larry Butts. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you, and you'll. Just, you just keep your wits about you, and you'll do fine. Uh, I'm so terrible at this. God damn it. Why do I do this? Uh, God damn it. So, how do I sound? How is my voice acting so far, Simmy? I hate this. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me the, what the victim's name is. Whew. I know this one. <laughs> I got this. Yeah, I got this. Whew, I know this one. Glad I read the case report cover to cover so many times. It's, um, wait, um, uh-oh. No, no, no way. I forgot. I'm drawing a total blank here. Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up for this? Up to this? You don't even know the victim's name. I don't know how to do her voice. Don't worry, she'll she'll die soon, so it's okay. Oh, the victim. Uh, of course, I know the victim's name. It's um, uh, I just forgot temporarily. I think I think I feel uh, I think I feel a migraine coming on. Look, the victim's name is listed in the court record. Just press tab to check any time or the RB button because I'm inside controller. So. 
What do you have? Turning smash. No one would believe I was the defense turning if I didn't carry this. Don't worry, right? Throughout this whole series, you're you are not an attorney, even if you show them this match. Cindy Sauter Spy. Profiles. Cindy Stone, age 22. Winston Payne, age 52. Yep. Go. Yeah. Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. <coughs> Mr. Wright. Who is the victim in this case? Uh, Cinder... No, Cindy Stone. Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now tell me, what was the cause of death? She died because she was... Hit with a blown object. She was shocked once by a blown object. Correct. You answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Ike. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well then. First question for the prosecution, Mr. Payne. Uh, yes, Your Honor. As Mr. Wright told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what the object was? The murder weapon was the statue of the tinker. It was found laying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. Statue added to evidence. The tinker is heavy, it's rather heavy. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. The evidence is only uh, is the only ammunition you have in the court. Use tab to check the court record frequently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do this. <coughs> Mr. Payne. Mr. Payne. The prosecution may call this its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Butts, to the stand. Uh, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecutions later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Uh-oh, Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. Yeah, Larry's fucking... Ugh, I hate him. Fucking smug-ass look. I am. Mr. Butts. Is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy. We were great together. We were Romeo and Julia, Cleopatra and Mark Antony. Uh, uh did they, didn't they all die? I wasn't dumped. She just, just, she was just not taking my calls or seeing me ever. Was it to you anyway? Mr. Butts, what you describe is generally what we mean, to mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. Then why isn't that guy the one being uh, questioned? Like, what do you mean one of them? Lies, all, all of it, lies. I don't believe a word of it. Your honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Okay, we got passport, 7.30. Got home before the murder. Hmm, indeed. She appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way. The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she has several sugar daddies. N daddies? Sugar? 
Yes, all the rants who give her money and gifts. She took their money and used them to support her lifestyle. Dude! We can clearly see what kind of a woman Mrs. Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think what do you think of her now? Right. I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I Stop him from entering. My client has no idea that the victim was seeing other men. The question is relevant <laughs> to the case. Oh, wins. Dude, Nick, what do you mean irre irrelevant? I cannot say that word, god damn it. Oh, god damn it. That cheating cheat dog. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna. I'm gonna just drop dead. Yeah. And when I meet her in heaven, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Mm. Let's continue. <clears throat> Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, oh boy. This is so not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment the day of the murder, did you not? Gulp. <laughs> well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did or maybe I didn't. Uh oh, he went. What do I do? Having an answer, honestly. I know. I'll send him a signal. Tell the truth. Oh, if you choose the other one, he says, lie like a dog. Uh, 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 yeah. Yeah, I was there. I went. Yeah, my throat's gonna die after this. It's only been 20 minutes. Order. Well, Mr. Butts. Dude, chill. She wasn't at home, man, so I, like, didn't see her. Your Honor, the defendant is lying. Lying? The prosecution would like to call the witness who can prove that Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies manners. Who is your witness? The man who found the body. Just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the crime scene. Order. Order. Order the court. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, your honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling the newspaper at the victim's building. Am I clipping the mic every time I go this close? Yeah, I am. I may need to lower it just a bit. Please bring Mr. Sawhead to the stand. <laughs> Mr. Sawhead. You sell newspaper subscription, is that correct? Oh, yes, yes, newspapers, yes. Mr. Sahe, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Okay. Uh, I, okay. I was going door to door selling uh, subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing the apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her, laying there, a woman not moving, dead. <laughs> I quailed in front, I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. 
I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to the nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was without a doubt the defendant sitting right over there. I hate this voice. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. Mary, why did you why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the victim's phone and the victim's phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Are phones, are phones supposed to be work during blackouts? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones don't function normally. The phone that Mr. Sahit used was the one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your personal, for, for your per. Per usual. Oh, for your per usual. Like a record. Added to the court records. Uh, it was out from noon to 6 p.m. <clears throat> no, Mr. Wright. Y yes? Yes, Your Honor? You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination? Your Honor? All right, right. This is it. The real deal. Um, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why, just voice the lies in the testimony that the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying? Your client's innocent, right? Then the victim must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? How do I prove it's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compared to the witness testimony to the evidence at hand, there's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you've found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in his face. Um, okay. Open the court record with tab and point out the contradiction in his testimony. Yeah. <sighs> I'm actually looking at that clock. I, I'm only gonna do like an hour today, but I'm looking at that clock, and my mouth is, my my throat is okay. This is uh, this is so fucking bad. Oh, my throat is killing me right now. Okay, the witnesses come. This is what I just uh, read. Okay, so I'm just gonna start pressing him. Oh, not present. Okay. Left button. Hold it. Isn't a man? Isn't a man leaving an apartment a common sight? I find it odd that you would take notice of him. Well, <laughs> I don't know. He was just seemed strange to me. That's all. Like he was mad and yet frightening at the same time. Just like a criminal fleeing from a crime scene. <clears throat> the defendant requests that the witness refrain from that from conjecture. Of course. What the witness means is that the man he look he saw looks suspicious. So what happened next? Uh he must have been in a hurry, he left the okay. Hold it. Huh? open you say yes yes the door was open halfway yes I watched for a moment but no one came out of the closet door at uh, the closed door <laughs> the closet that's odd in a big city like this I thought I see and what happened next Think it is strange I looked inside the apartment. Express that. What gave you the idea to do that? Well, the door was well, the door was half open, you see. 
Isn't it only human you want to peek? We climb mountains because they're there. It's the same thing. It really fucking isn't. The fuck? True words were never been spoken. Anyone will look inside. Huh. Why did Pink cut him off so quickly? So you looked in the apartment. What happened next? I saw, uh, I saw her lying there. A woman not moving. Dead. Are you sure she was dead? W well... No, I guess it w I wasn't. But she wasn't moving at all. And there was blood everywhere. I guess that would look fatal to anyone. Very well. What happened next? I go in pride. Found myself unable to go inside. Oh, I already found it. So, you didn't touch anything in the apartment? Oh, uh, yes! I mean, no! Nothing! Okay, what happened next? I already found it, so let's just go back. Let's fucking do this. Oh, shit. Fuck. Fuck. Okay, let's do this. I'm guessing it's this one. Objection! Nope, I fucked up, I fucked up, I fucked up, I fucked up, I fucked up. Fuck. I fucked up. I thought it was that one. I'm gonna try find myself unable to go to the door. Oh, I, I thought to call the police immediately. He went inside because he touched the fucking phone. You thought to call the police? Does that mean you didn't actually call them? Please, please, listen to the rest of the testimony. You thought to call the police. What happened next? However, her phone wasn't working in the apartment. The phone in her apartment wasn't working? Yes, I mean, no. No, it wasn't, right? But you said you didn't go into the apartment, or did you? Oh, oh, that, I can explain that. There was a cordless phone on the shelf in the entrance way. I reached inside and tried to use the, using that to call. And the phone was, wasn't working, correct? What happened next? I uh, went to the nearby park and found a public phone. You use a public phone? Well, you s well, you see, I don't have a cell phone. And me, in the middle of the of the afternoon, there was no answer at the nearby apartments. He's all right. What time did you call again? I remember the time. The time exactly was uh, okay. 1 p.m. Are you certain? Yes, absolutely. He seems really confident. 1 p.m. Right, right. Doesn't that sound strange to you? Present some evidence to contradict them. Okay. Oh, okay. Let's do this. Okay. Objection! You found the body at 1 p.m.? You sure? Yes. It was 1 p.m. for sure. Or for certain. <laughs> Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement, your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes, <coughs> the autopsy notes, the time of death after some time after 4 p.m. There was a uh, nobody to a uh, nobody to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three-hour gap? Uh, oh, that. Oh. Uh. 
This is streaming out. This is streaming out. <clears throat> I lost his voice. God damn it. Uh. This is streaming out. The witness merely forgot the time. After his testimony, I find it hard to believe. Mr. Sawhead, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I, uh. Well, I. Gee, that's really a good question. Great job, right? Way to put, way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one, and their whole story falls apart. Yeah, I can do a really good Maya vo uh, Mia voice. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? <sighs> Time of discovery. You see, I found the body, I heard the time. When I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the vision must have been watching a videotape program. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry for the misunderstanding. Fucking liar. You believe that guy. He's rubbing his hands so much. It's annoying. Mm. I see. You heard a voice saying that the time of the tape program... Uh, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right. You know what to do. I got this one. Time of discovery. Yes. Oh, yeah. I heard of this. Let's press him. Hold it. You said you heard, not saw? Yes, I heard. All I saw was the body laying there. I didn't think anybody would look at anything else, least of all my watch. I didn't even know what the fuck you said there. Oh, God. Huh. Isn't that a little strange? So you're saying you heard something. But if you were so shocked by the body, you wouldn't hear anything at all. Eh, uh, the witness did say he actually heard the time. It's luxurious to suggest he wouldn't hear anything. Hmm. <laughs> I have to press. I have to agree with the prosecution. Witness, continue your testimony. That's a voice and time. Okay. Are you sure it was a television, not a radio? Well, no, I guess it may have been a radio. Incident Incidentally, there was no radio on the premise. There was only a large television. Right. <coughs> right. I can't put my finger on it, but there seems something... But there's something... <coughs> but something about this seems fishy. Something about hearing the television. The witness testifies he heard the time. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? Oh, I already said that. Hold it. How do you explain the gap? Oh, wait. I already found it. The television was off because the... The... Uh, the... Uh, uh, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> the... The... Um, the lights were off. How do you explain the gap? Oh, witness, can you explain this? Yeah, let's go back. <laughs> Sorry, I, I keep on confusing my buttons because I'm not used to Xbox controllers. Objection! Hold it right there. <coughs> the, prosecution, the prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of. The prosecution has said that there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. Huh? 
you could have heard a television or a video. Gah! I well, Urk. The defend has a point. You have an explanation for this, Mr. H Sawhead? No, I I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. Ah! Wait, wait! I remember now, Mr. Sawhead. The court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These contest questions are harming your credibility. That, and you seem rather distraught. Ah! My apologies, Your Honor. It, uh, it must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well. Mr. Sahir, let's hear your testimony one more time. Fuck. This is just one fucking case, my dude. This is the easiest and shortest case, and my throat's already collapsing on itself. Yeah, actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it! There was a stable clock in the apartment, was it there? Yeah, the murder weapon, the killer you said to hit his foot to hit the victim. It must have been what I saw. This one's easy. The defendant may cross and summon the witness. Sorry, I was drinking. Gladly. Okay. Then right here I saw it. Okay. That strikes me as a very suspicious mistake. Yes, I see how you like to, uh, how you'll be a little doubtful. I'm really sorry. I only just remembered a table clock. A table clock? Okay. A table clock? Was there a clock at the scene? I don't remember that from the flashback I was just looking at. This is the first I've ever heard of it. Yeah, the murder weapon, the killer you said. There it is. Just present. It doesn't look like a fucking clock. It's a, it's a, it's a fucking um, it's a statue. Okay. Objection. Wait, just, just a moment. <laughs> the murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was this statue. Now, how did you suppose? How do you suppose it to be a? How is this supposed to be a clock? Ah! You, your just objections and evidence. You just why do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mister Sawhead. Hey, I saw it there. Okay, that's a clock. Y your Honor, if I may. Yes, Mister Payne. As the witness said it, the statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just have to tilt it. This is a time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness testimony was correct. This is a clock. You have any problems with the cis money now? Uh, yeah. How did he know it was a clock? He has to like touch it to know it's a clock. Yes, your your honor. There's a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Hmm. Indeed. Oh, I fucked that up. The witness knew it was a class because he went into the apartment. You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Ah! Oh, yeah? Prove it. Prove it. I was there. I'll do what better than that. I can prove you were the one that you were the one who killed her. Yeah, that's accusing a lot. You struck her with a clock and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Order in the court. 
Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sahid. You sound... The sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandably, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. The voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. I'm sucking in a lot here because I'm talking so much. And it sucks. Wait, what is the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the witness face. <laughs> yeah. Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I, 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 that, 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 I, I never. Look, I, the clock, I heard, no, I saw, no, <laughs> Shut up, shut up, shut up, I hate you. It was him, I tell you. I saw him. He killed her, and he should have, and she burned. Burning. Give him death. What the fuck, dude? Order. Order in the court, I say. Yeah, your honor? A moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Wright. Your honor. You claim that the so you claim that the sound of the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. Better think carefully. Yes, your y yeah, y uh, blah, 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 blah. Y your honor. The sound Mr. Zahir heard was definitely this clock. A fact which appears clearly if you simply... Try something the clock. Let's sound the clock now and here in this court, Your Honor. May I have the clock? I asked the court, I asked the court to listen very carefully. I think it's 825. That's certainly strange way. Uh, that's certainly a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker after all. So, so, we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's, it's 1125. Ah! As you see, this class is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between Mr. Sahit heard and the actual time of death. So Mr. Sahit, try not to talk your way out of this one. You forgot one thing. Uh oh, what's he talking about? While it may have seemed like the cross is running three hours slow, it proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. Ugh. He's right. How am I supposed to prove that? Damn it. I was so close. Mr. Wright. Seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Uh, yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indict the witness. Unfortunately, this ends the cross examination of Mr. Frank Sawhead. I come all the way down here to testify, and look what happens! You trick me like a criminal! A criminal! You lawyers are all slime! I say slime! Slime! Okay, yeah, I'm having too much fun with that guy. <sighs> I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about, about it now. Not, not, um, not so fast, Mr. Sawhead. Mia? I mean, Chief! Listen up, right? 
Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But Sheaf, it's over. You can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But does that mean you can you can't still win? Try to think outside the box. Out of the box. Don't waste time. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure the reason out and you'll have your proof. Right, miss? Right, right? <laughs> right, right. Right, right. 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 Can you think of a reason why the clock would be three hours slow? Yes. Hmm. Wait. Maybe I can prove it. You must have the evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let him have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found the evidence that to support his claims? Of course. There's a piece of it. There's a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claims beyond a doubt. Yeah. Tough words. Let's see you pull off this pull this one off. Let's see the evidence that you prove why the clock was running slow. Objection! Oh yeah, take that. Fuck. The victim had just returned home from abroad the day of before the murder. One second. As we know, the sign difference between here and Paris is nine hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't three hours slow, it was nine hours fast. The victim hadn't reset the victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her on the head on her apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Sahid? Or should I say, Mr. Did it? God damn it, right. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. Order. Order, I say. Well, this case is certainly turned out different than we expected. Oh, I expected. Mr. Payne, your witness. Yeah, he was arrested. <clears throat> That's Larry. He was arrested and taken away, your honor. Very well. Mr. Wright. Yes, your honor. I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I ever seen anyone complete a defense so quickly. And I find the true culprit at this time. I, I fucked all that up. I fucked. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but the court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Botts, not guilty. Yay, confetti! I know a fun fact about the confetti and the confetti. And with that, the court is adjourned. I'll let you guys know once they introduce the character. It turns out that Franz Sahid was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of their house. That day, when Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sahid let himself, let, let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching, for her, uh, while he was searching her place, the victim returned. Fluster, Mr. Sahid grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find and whack. Dead. Blood. Statue drip. I got stirred. This is courtroom, defendant lobby number two. Yay! Huh. Still can't believe I, we won! Right. Good job in there. Congratulations. Th thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Not at all, not at all. You fought your own battles in there. 
It's been a it's been a while since I seen a child in such a satisfying note. I've never seen the sheep look this happy. She's this glad. Imagine how Larry must feel. But life it's over. Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Aw, oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and dead and gone soon. G good. I uh, wait. No, I mean b bad, 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 bad. Larry, you're innocent. The case closed. But my Cindy Wendy's gone, man. She's gone forever. Larry, she was a. Uh, nah, never mind. Congratulations, Harry. H Harry. Y yes. You, I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Potts, innocent. <clears throat> Thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this ever. Let's celebrate dinner, a movie, my treat. Oh, no, no. I couldn't. Hey, I was the, w I was the one that got you off the hook. Oh, hey. Here, take this as a present. A present for me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, I made two clocks for her. I made one for her and one for me. R really? You made this? Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick. <laughs> You believe it? I was so in that check. I was so into that. Oh my god. I was so into that check. And she was just playing me for a fool. Doesn't that make you just want to cry? Larry. Are you sure? Uh, squeeze me? I think... I think she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me. It's okay. Oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right? Right? Do you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Huh. Oh yeah, right. <clears throat> what the heck is she talking about? It's a statue. Take that! Check this out, Larry. Proof positive that you want some shump to her. Huh? What about that clock? This is a clock you made for her, Larry. And she took it with her when she traveled. Eh, whatever. She probably just needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's pretty heavy clock to take tra traveling. Well... Make of it what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really? I am. Thanks. Hope that I make him feel a little bit better. Right. I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you'll realize things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in, in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right. Listen, learn, grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner? On me? Or drink a toast to innocent butts? Yeah! Oh, speaking of Harry, you were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Uh, yeah, part of it, at least. You'll have to tell me more in s more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? Ah, She offered me everything Larry offered me. <laughs> oh, for her. And so my first trial came to a close. 
Then he slapped me on back and said, Gee, Nick, I hope we're good friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us. Unless you got the cloak he gave me. Uh. I didn't know it then. But that clock was soon going to be the center of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would never be one promise that I wouldn't be, would be one promise I wouldn't it would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. The end of case one. So that was a lot of oh. the next one. Turnabout sisters. Oh no 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 don't 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 start it. Yeah, let's save the process, don't start it. There you go. Okay, let's go back. So no 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 Okay, we'll just see um let's see the beginning of the next case and then we can um we'll just um see the beginning, end it up there, and then we can end the first episode. Hello This is Maya Hey Maya, it's me. Mia What's up? <laughs> What's up? You haven't called in a while. Sorry. I've been busy. How have you been? Well, lonely. It's um, lonely. I can't do Maya's, Mia's voice. Uh, Maya's voice. Well, uh, ah, what should I choose for Maya? Well, um, well, lonely, and it's all your fault. Nah, I'm just teasing. It's been great. I'm finally getting used to having my own place. That's good to hear. Actually, I'm calling you because I have a favor to ask. I know, I know. You want me to hold some evidence for you. Sharp as always. Sharp as always. There's a lot of buzz about the upcoming trial. I just don't feel safe keeping the evidence here. I gotcha. So, what is this this time? It's a clock. A clock? A clock? Yeah. It, yeah. <coughs> yeah. It's made to look like a statue of the Tinker, and it tells you the time. I thought you might like it. You always like toys. Hey! I'm not a, I'm not a little girl anymore, sis. No, no. You know I'm only teasing. I don't know what voice to get my ass. I'm going to keep fluctuating to whatever. No, no, you know I'm only teasing. Uh, I should probably tell you, the clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working? <coughs> it's not working? That's lame. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> Fuck. I had I had to take out the clock workout. I had to take the clock workout. Sorry. I put some papers inside of it instead. Papers. Isn't that the evidence then? Huh. Maybe there's a possibility that it might turn out. Well, there's a possibility that it might turn out. <coughs> well, there's a possibility that it might turn out that way. Yes. Can you come to by the office tonight, say, 9, to pick it up? I'll be in a pre-trial meeting until then. Okay, sets. Okay, it says. I expect that there's something good. Like burgers. I could really go for a good burger. Okay, okay. We'll hit the usual joint. Alright! <coughs> Alright! It's a deal! Okay, sis. See you soon! I don't know what voice to give her. Yep, I'll be waiting, Maya. Beep. Conversation recorded September 5. 9.27 a.m. September 5, 8.57 p.m. Fake Ola offices. <coughs> now, now, Miss Faye, I'll take what's mine, the papers. I'm, I'm sorry, but I can't give you what I don't have. Miss Faye. You're a poor liar. Why is he right over there? 
that must be the thinker that swallowed those papers. H how could you know? Ho, ho, ho! You are not cogniferous of my background. Gathering information is my business, you see. I, I should have been more careful. Ho, ho! My dear Miss Bay, I am so sorry. But I am, I'm afraid I must ask you for one more thing. Your eternal silence. Farewell, Miss Faye. Ah. God damn it. <laughs> Mr. Red White of Blue Corp. Red, white, blue. September 5, 1908. This will be in a few minutes after it uh, happened. Okay, ah. so I should be able to get out now. Yep, let's save here. And we'll be back next time. So, my voice acting is shit, I know. But I like playing these games. They're fun. Um, I'll pick it up next time. Just continue this. Um, if you guys like what you saw, like, comment, subscribe, follow the Twitch channel. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, and until next time, guys. Oh, and don't forget, we're doing visual, visual novel November this whole month. So, see you guys. I'll be posting the videos. Bye. Bye. Awkward. Awkward.